All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Julie Martins. I am the co-organizer for Ride the Dog Nigeria. First of all, what was Ride the Dog? What was this community all about? Why are we here? Why do we have to be part of this community? First of all, Ride the Dog community is a global community that is interested in documentation. As a community, Ride the Dog have been awesome in sharing information about technical writing and documentation in general. It has been their greatest joy as a community to help each other grow and achieve the same pace along the line. The community has served as a mentor to so many people, has served as a point of learning to so many people, and also a place we had to draw inspiration, ideas, and ask questions about technical writing and documentation. This is a thought, this is our fourth event, our fourth meetup in Nigeria. And during this time, we've consistently organized meetups, bringing in speakers from across the country, bringing in speakers within Nigeria to come and share their experience about what they knew of writing the doc and what documentation, technical writing is all about. It has been a great journey and I've been, I've been pleased to have all of you guys join us. As time goes on, the return of people that join us keep increasing and it has been an awesome thing. And I really want to appreciate all of you guys for coming around. I really want to appreciate all of you guys for coming around. I'm not actually the host for today. And the host for today is actually Mustafa. And anywhere from now, he will be taking over from me. So immediately he does that. The reason why we are allowed to leave in this class. Okay. All right, once again, at this point in time, I would like to welcome Rufaya Mustafa to take the lead of this meeting. I hope we'll have a nice time here. All right, Mustafa, up to you. Work with merchants and developers trying to integrate into Paystack. And nice to have, it's nice to be here with you all today. Well, Dami, I think you can continue with the presentation, I guess. Um, um, I'm supposed to have, um, it's supposed to be a talk section, um, section, so I don't have a presentation. So I don't know if, if um, Mustafa wants to ask the questions now. Hello, Dami, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. So I'm starting with the questions. Like, I just got the question now. All right. First and foremost, Dami, I'm going to start with this. You're going to tell us about pay stack documentation generally. That's the first point of call. And after that, she tell us how you guys have been able to improve on user's experience via your documentation. So the first question on my list here is what make a good developer documentation? Um, okay, so the first thing is a good um, developer documentation basically has to, basically has to be able to Old a developer throughout their integration experience. So you need to ensure your developers don't have issues understanding 
um, the APIs they're trying to integrate into, um, they are trying to integrate with, they don't have issues with um, discrepancy. Like if you say this is what your, your calling this API is going to do, this is what you should actually do. You don't like create a room for confusion for developers. Um, a good developer documentation should also be, should also be um, visually appealing to developers. There are a lot of great developer documentation out there, but most likely not visually appealing to people because it's more or less feels like, it's more or less feels like a chore. It's more or less feels like, um, what is it called? It feels like a, a, a thesis from maybe university or something like that. So a good developer documentation starts should be visually appealing. Um, your copy that is the right top needs to be, you need to use simple languages. And this is something we are still working on and learning on um, daily. So you need to use languages that are not too complicated because you have, um, you have different spectrum of experience with um, the, uh, the kind of developers that will most likely be integrating into your um, documentation. So you need to cater for all of them. Yes, you might not be able to do a very good job because the way you explain things to someone that is probably um, um, a beginner will be different from the way you explain things to someone that is more experienced. Like the cost of knowledge comes into people that are more experienced because they just want to get into, okay, this is what I want to do. This is, this, I don't need much story. So you need to be able to create that balance whereby people that are not so versatile with technical terms or people that are just coming into the um, the API ecosystem are able to still integrate into your um, documentation without much um, problem. So yeah, I guess that's what makes a good developer documentation. Content, content, um, graphic, like good design, and lots of um, um, materials to help unblock people with their different use cases. All right, thank you very much. That was a nice one. So from what you're saying so far, so content, Good graphics design, good information architecture, good information structure uh, are what makes a good developer documentation. Because your documentation is not actually a documentation. If the users cannot use it to solve their problem. Okay, now our next outline of discussion here is what opportunities exist for technical writers and documentation? But before you answer this, or before you talk about this, before you talk about this, I would like you to just make this clarity. Someone asked this question in the WhatsApp group that we'll have, or we'll have a local WhatsApp group where we talk. Someone have asked this question, that what's the difference between a technical writer and a documentarian? So while you're telling us the opportunities in technical writing and in documentation, also tell us the lines between these two sets of persons, or if they are one particular person. Just can you just throw more light on that? Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'll start with your last question. So the difference between um, a technical writer and a documentarian. So I guess eventually it still boils down to writing. Even if you're a documentarian, you still have to write. So your foundational skill in writing still has to be um, good enough before you can even um, then then be able to document um, things. So I think the, the difference between a technical writer and a documentarian is a documentarian will more or less like be more concerned about, about um, structure. You more or less, when I mean structure, I mean like information hierarchy, um, like the old scope, a technical writer is more or less like a focused area, like, okay, I want to write about this certain thing. Okay, so this is what I want to write about. Let's say maybe how to, make a post request. That's what the technical writer will most likely do. But sometimes like the documentarian will be like, okay, when after calling a post request, like on the maybe nav bar, immediately you maybe make a post request. You should put maybe the next API that is going to be called should be a get request to verify something. So um, it's more or less like it's still, you still need to learn how to write, but maybe a documentarian will be someone that still has that experience with making more structure on a, on a broader spectrum than a technical writer who's, um, who's um, what's it called? Is more concerned about the structure per per content. So yeah, but I think either way, this is still a gray line because either either um, either um, rule can should be able to do both things. It's easy. It's, I think things an easy transition. So now, what opportunities are available for technical writers and documentarians? So I think um, technical writing is gradually taking picking up pace, and a lot of companies are trying to figure this out. Um, 
this from like interaction with other people that I know are trying to become more conscious about um, developer experience. So yeah, the, the, the developer experience like is more or less like the user experience for just products. Now developer experience is something that a lot of companies are really taking into, are really putting effort into and making a lot of investment. So when it comes to technical writing, there are a lot of rules. A lot of companies are revamping to have that developer experience. Um, and a lot of companies are looking at looking into ways in which they are um, their products can be used by developers because developers are most likely their primary users. Um, so they need a lot of people that can write and not just write, like people that can write and writing that can actually like hold the hands of developers throughout their um, process when integrating. So um, I think it's something that a lot of people can actually go into right now not just about technical writing, because you also need the part technical, you need to be experienced with, with a certain form of, of um, what's it called? Maybe development or something, because in order to be able to write about certain things, you might, if you're a good researcher, yeah, you might be able to jump into it and just research about things, but you might still need like foundational knowledge or maybe programming or something like that. But yeah, so there are lots of um, the opportunities right now. A lot of companies are looking for technical writers. If you search right now, like technical writing jobs or um, developer experience roles and things like that, developer advocacy, there are a lot of roles. And some of these things, a lot of people are still figuring it out because some people are merging maybe developer advocacy and um, um, what's it called, De developer evangelist into a single role. So you still have to do writing, some have to do coding, but yeah, but a lot of companies right now are looking for um, developers that can help them write, um, their, their, that can help, like bring their product into life for developers to make use of, like writing things that will make it like, like some shows for developers to go, oh, okay, this is what I want to do. Because a lot of, there are a lot of great products out there, but developers don't know how to probably get into these things, like how to integrate into this product to build beautiful um, products, to build like world-class products. So this is where technical writers come in. Like you can use a writing skill to, um, to help people out there trying to build products, get their products out, um, get their products into the hands of their users. And yeah, so it's a very, it's a very, um, it's a very, I won't say young, young um, field, but it's very, um, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, wisdom, um, Rufai, are you still there? So I think someone asked the question um, on the chat saying, do you have to be highly skilled at coding to be a technical writer? Um, that's Susie, sorry if I'm pronouncing your wrong name wrongly. So um, so it's, it depends. So it's more or less like, you can look at it this way. If, do you have to be a professional? Do you have to know about, um, what's it called? Ingredients and products, like in the cooking aspect, do you have to know about ingredients and products to be able to be a chef? So yeah, so you need like that certain level of understanding basic things like, for instance, if you want to write about, let's say cloud technologies, what's your foundation on networking? What's your foundation on um, the cloud technologies available out there? How are you able to, because writing is more or less like, like it's more or less like sales. You are more or less trying to like, like buy your um, developers in. So it's more or less like you need to be able to use the right lingo. You need to be able to provide enough context. You need to be able to ensure they are, um, like you don't miss anything out. So yes, I think you need the technical background, but you don't have to be like a core developer. Like if you're familiar with basic web technologies, you're familiar with, um, like some people call themselves um, tech enthusiasts. I don't know like the broad spectrum of what that is. But if you're just like, you are always reading on these things, you should be able to also be a good technical writer because you don't necessarily have to, you don't necessarily have to like be a primary coder to. Um, can, can you kindly mute the person speaking? Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, so as I was saying, so Susie, like you don't necessarily have to be like a core developer, like you, but you need to be able to understand the um, the the right um, the right jargon to make use of when you are writing. So like it's just like our writers probably write fiction. You go into um, research on maybe um, maybe extraterrestrial life and things like that. Like you do your research. So with the coding background, you, your research might be limited. Like because you already those things are already inbuilt. But if you don't necessarily have a coding background or a technical background, you will just need to like do a lot of research and ensure you're using the right language in order to be able to come up with like good write-ups for your documentation. I hope that answers your question, Susie. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dami, for answering Susan's question. That was right. Okay, but well, yeah. back to our discussion outline now. We've been able to deal with what makes a good developer. And you, you told us what makes a good document story, what makes a good developer documentation. You told us that to do with your context, your contents, and your information architecture, the way you structure mm -hmm. this information so users to be able to access. And you also told us, you also explained the difference between technical writers and documentation. And you told us the opportunities in them. Now, let's talk about your company a little bit now. Paystack. We all know about Paystack and we all know how awesome they are delivering on their promises to actually serve users and help them handle transactions. So along this line, right, from based on my personal experience, I've been, I have integrated Paystack API before. So tell us what problem led to rethinking the Paystack documentation. Can you just share that with us? What was the problem that led to the rethinking of Paystack documentation? Okay, um, so yeah, so the 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 documentation um, platform we're making use of initially um, wasn't giving us the room to be able to make like customizations to our artists. So the first customization was making our documentation like fit our brand guidelines, like fit the brand itself. Um, having been able to build custom components, being able to like uh, like harness like. Being able to like make things like more like change the design of things, make things much more beautiful, arranging of um, like the information structure, arrangements, placement, and things like that. It wasn't giving us that room. The customization wasn't um, it was rigid, so we couldn't like customize things a lot. It wasn't suiting our brand um, our brand guidelines. So we just had to um, take that effort to like invest in building a new documentation from scratch to enable us like have that room and control over the things we want to based on the way we are planning to scale and things like that. So yeah, so customization was the primary reason why we switched from our previous um, documentation. We wanted to have more control over things, like make things fit our brand and, and provide a beautiful experience too for our developers. So that was what led to awesome. like, we were rethinking the paystack documentation. Awesome. That was nice. That was nice. Yeah. You you guys rethink the face that documentation because you want to customize it in a way that suits the developers that are using your products. Yeah, and suits the brand and provide a better experience for our developers. Okay, suits the brand and provide a better experience for your developer. Yeah. That's perfectly well. Thank you very much. That's awesome. That's great. Okay, now the next the next one of discussion is. How has this new documentation improved the developer experience? How are you guys measuring it? What are the metrics behind you guys measuring this? What are the metrics? How are you measuring it? And what's it like? Um, so we have a feedback form on the documentation that allows that allows us to um, like when the developer is not comfortable with the particular page they are on, like if they need improvement on it, they send us feedback and the feedback we is kind of integrated into our workflow where we get it instantly. And most of the time I tend to respond to these things if it's something that's really technical and make the update. So we, we rely on feedback a lot. Um, we are working with our merchants. We have um, our community where we sometimes reach out and ask them, okay, how do you think this can be, um, how can we improve this? How can we make things better? And we found out that, yeah, like you need to improve copy a lot. Your When I mean copy, I mean like the write up on your documentation. Like copy is a very, it's a major thing that developers actually want to, to like want us to make improvements on code snippet is also something that developers want us to make um, improvements on. So um, we also look at um, how, how 
the difficulty in understanding, which still boils down to your copy and code snippet, the difficulty in developers understanding the things um, you are currently trying to explain. Like if you are trying to explain how we accept payments on Paystack, for instance, we have three methods for that. Some people still get confused. Oh, okay, what's, why do we have three methods? Um, how can I use this one? What if I'm on mobile? Can I still make use of this? Thing? So um, information, um, Information hierarchy is really important in this kind of case. Then being able to explain things in, a, in, in ways that like doesn't cause confusion for people of different background. So basically we rely on feedback for improving our developer documentation. We also rely on, on, um, on, on um, what's it called? Like the 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 look and feel of like the time the time frame it takes for a developer the kind of complaints we get like is this is is this something that is coming from a position where because some people just sent um, random um, what's it called feedback we also look at it like okay what what kind of what kind of um, change does this developer want to score what's the developer experience like we can infer that from from the tone in which the developer like reached out. So these are the things we use in improving our documentation and ensuring that um, we, 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 we provide like the good experience for every developer trying to integrate. And it's not, it's not a, we are, like we are, we, it can never be a finished process. We keep improving, we keep improving, we keep seeing new ways to go about things. And yeah, and it's just something that will keep occurring and occurring like while the company exists, so yeah. Oh, that was nice. Thank you very much, Dami. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. So the way you guys measure your performance, your documentation is by the feedback loop. And you guys have been able to prioritize this feedback and mm -hmm. know the one to work on and know the one to declare back to users to use. You guys also engage with your communities, asking yeah. them, what is necessary and what is important at the at this time for you guys to run an update on. Okay, the next line of conversation, the next line of discussion is in what ways is the paystack documentation unique? Um so our documentation is unique mainly because um it's simple to use. Um it's it we try to we try to um we try to improve on our on our communication to developers we don't just we've seen cases where we just like it's easy to just like put things to add things to documentation but we've gotten to a stage where we know that okay the lesser the better like we remove things like when a developer comes to a particular page how do you like what do you need to quickly get started? We don't want to like extend things. And like I said, this thing is like a continuous thing. We've not gotten to that stage. It's not perfect, but it's 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 unique in the sense that it's very simple to use. Um, and we constantly make updates, like like updates probably go on the documentation, like at least in the week, we've probably, we make updates like almost weekly. Like they might be so true, they might not be like, oh, probably like seen by everyone, but updates keep coming like regularly. It's, we are like, feedback based on feedback we are improving the documentation and it's, we're also trying to make it even more simple to use for everyone awesome thank you very yeah. much okay me we could see your question i'm going to take your question later let's just follow the discussion outline gradually then there's a room for question okay that's nice i i really understood understood what you just said now okay now not to dwell on that much because i'm trying to be mindful of the time okay what issues do developers what issues do developers not satisfy with the current paystack documentation? Right. I think I didn't get that part right. What are the issues do what are the issues developers need? Okay. I think I understand what you're trying to say there. So um, the people that are not satisfied, what what kind of issues do they typically raise? Um, raise? Okay, yeah. So um, yeah, so like the first one is the code snippets. So we've realized we need to actually your code snippet actually needs to be um, actually needs to be like code um, bug free. So people typically just copy your code snippet. Like you can't just put a prop 
on your documentation that oh it's just like a sample even if it's like sample like a boiler plate like okay with basic thing and you need to fill it in developers actually want us to like put the complete code on the documentation so what they just need to do is copy and put it into their code and it should run so that's one issue we get a um a lot like uh there's no code or yeah this the code is not it's buggy the code does not do what um I, doesn't fit my use case which is quite difficult because you can't put a code snippet that will suit all use case some people are making use of probably our apis for lending some are making use of it for um, um what's it called logistics and things like that so there are different use cases so that's one use case um a buggy um not buggy per se code snippet not fitting use cases um and that use case and that um, issue raised is um code snippets in different languages so yes we probably have like three node php and core that's what we have currently some as um, Java and C sharp. So developers want us to put it in the languages they must um, they work with. So Python, Ruby on Rails, um, Java, C sharp, Node, PHP, and I think Go. So these are languages we get a lot of things which we are currently working on to provide snippets in all those things. So um, code snippets not fitting use case, not um, code snippets, not in um, the language of the developer. We also get um, comments on on on. Um, the copy like oh it's too difficult to understand or oh, this is not good enough for someone not technical like myself and things like that so it's basically the copy and the code snippets that we get most of our complaints on thank you very much thank you very much trying yeah. to be time conscious thank you very much all right the third section of the talk please start documentation team tell us something about the team that works on tell us something about the team that works on the documentation at paystack something fun, something lively about your team. Uh, so yeah, the team consists of, um, we consist of um, myself, the design team, and basically consists of the integrations team. So the integrations team are like, we're in charge of helping developers out with integration, developers and merchants generally. So um, the design team also where we get, it's more or less like we have a consistent code design um, review. So, okay, we need to do this thing. The design comes up, we code it. Oh no, this thing needs to change a bit. This thing is not perfect. Even things you don't see, like we go back and forth, back and forth on things like that. There are components where we design that probably take us months to just come up with because it's not perfect enough. Um, and we always have, we always have like syncs, like, okay, this is what we need to, we prioritize. Okay, this is what we need to currently do for um, the update we currently need to make. Can you help us out this? Can you help us with this design? Mm -hmm. So typically we have this, this, um, this tight needs between the designers and the integrations team where uh, as the design is coming up, we kind of have the influence of, okay, no, this will probably not be good enough for this kind of use case. Can we make it better? We change that. We could, they also see that, oh, the spacing is not good enough here. The color, the contrast isn't good enough here. So we always have that kind of back and forth, back and forth, which, which is actually kind of interesting and is the way we are able to um, ship products that are very, um, that are very um, easy to use for our developers because internally we've already had our back and forth on them. So I guess that's it. Okay. All right. The next question I should be asking is actually. Sorry, I. Okay. Someone asked a question in the chat. Let's just take that now. Let's start from Opeyemi's question. What tool do you engage for documentation at Paystack? Okay, so we make use of um, Gatsby. Gatsby is a React.js um, framework for building static um, HTML. It's for building static HTML. So we make use of um, Gatsby. Um, HTML, CSS comes in because you need that for building the base structure. Um, then we make use of MDX. MDX, since we are making use of Gatsby, which is a React framework, MDX allows us to write a Markdown file with, um, with adding HTML tags, which is JSX in it. So that way we are able to like just write in a free form using the Markdown syntax and also add our components for things that we need to customize. So Gatsby, JS, um, MDX, and the base HTML and CSS. Right. What company documentation does Paystack team rate highly? <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, we actually. So the thing is, we we 
we, we, we research a lot. So there are a lot of them, but I might just be able to mention a few of the ones that are just coming to mind. So that's where your JS actually. That's where your JS is actually very good. Um, they actually have um, a very good documentation. You should check them out. Like awesome. the documentation is neat. And of that's course, Stripe. Good. And of course, Stripe. Stripe, yeah. Everyone talks about Stripe documentation. If there's yeah. any documentation that everyone have been pointing to is Slack, Stripe, and yes, and Node.js. And Node, yes. Mm. Thank you very much. So the next on taking up the next question I should be asking is, okay, we've treated this, we've treated this, we've treated this. The question in the charts, taking questions from the chat now. Okay, Kelvin, your question. Do you have video documentation option for those that prefer video? More like a tab for text and video. Yeah, so um, um, video is something we are working on internally. For instance, you can see my, my setup right now, like this is probably where we'll be shooting our um, tutorials um, from. So yeah, we are planning to work on videos. Currently we have few, but it's not something like we've really, we've really um, like taken into, like we've really prioritized due to um, like other, th like we need to start somewhere first, like get a good documentation out, then add videos to it. So video is something we are, looking into and we should be able to get them out as soon as we can. So we already have our setup. So it's just a matter of making them available and adding them to the documentation. So presently we don't have um, like no videos for the, we have some, but we need to like drill down to produce more for developers out there. All right. He said, thanks chief. I guess you can see the chat. <laughs> yeah, I can. All right. Thank you very much for answering. Thank you very much for answering our question. And uh, we're trying to, compress the time to run it off. <laughs> to run it off, what can you tell us about Can you hear me now? Sorry, I was trying to meet that person from the meeting. Yeah, that's fine. Hello, Dami, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, okay, to round it up, what, what was your last word? What was your summary for developers, documentarians, technical writers, designers, everybody that use your documentation? What's the last thing you have to tell them? Um, I guess, first of all, thank them for um, using them. And I really appreciate um, you people like, um, calling me to come and speak here today. So for the, um, the for the technical writers or the developers that want to get into um, developer experience engineering, um, it's actually a field where you get to do, like you get to actually like learn every day. You get to like, um, like share your knowledge with people out there. You get to do a lot of things. Like it's those, it's not just about writing. You also you also be like producing like writing codes. I like also making videos and things like that. So for the people like uh, that are considering it, it's a very lucrative and a very fulfilling, um, a very fulfilling field to go into. Um, for developers that are um, that are probably using our own, that are currently using us, feel free to reach out um, using our feedback form or support at. Um, stack.com we always we are looking forward to improving the documentation more and like make your experience even better and um, when you're integrating thank you very much you're welcome thank you very much dami for accepting our invites and Ulua femi is saying she thank you for the insight that was awesome please at this point as the conversation is going on at this point currently now before we move to the next topic of conversation this is actually like a breakout session you can actually share your social media handles with each other. Let's get to follow each other, make friends. That's the essence why we're here, to have fun, make friends for subsequent times. So Dami is going to share his Twitter handle with us and we'll follow up. I will do like, and everybody can do the same. So we could just have this togetherness. And Dami, you are yeah. always welcome to join our local WhatsApp group. So maybe after now, we'll send you our WhatsApp group link to join so that most of the times, People might have questions and they ask, you can easily respond to them. How do you see that? <laughs> uh, we can talk about this offline. <laughs> 
So, but yeah, um, okay, so the thing okay, is, so, I so yeah, know. so the thing is, I'm not so much of a um, social media person. I probably have just a LinkedIn account, which I probably go once in a while. But yeah, um, so if you need to reach me, like, reach me on, reach me on um, my LinkedIn, I, I guess I'll just have to, like, clean things up. And from there, probably join WhatsApp. The reason for the WhatsApp thing is, like, you can discuss this offline so you can understand what the, um, the group is about and things like that. So, yeah. All right, no problem. You could share your LinkedIn link with us as well. So we could join. Like, I know I, I'm following you already on LinkedIn. All right. All right, yes. thank you very much for coming around, Diamond. That was awesome. And um, thank you guys for left. It's 11.40 at the dot. Okay, it's 11.40 at the dot. And our next speaker for today is Wisdom. Wisdom will be taking us on a workshop on Google Summer of Code. So, Mr. Wisdom, are you ready for us? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. All right. All right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, those wisdom. So. Oh, okay. Thank those you. Wisdom. I don't need to introduce him. The flyers <laughs> have introduced him, so you could go ahead. <laughs> All right. Okay, and thank your background, you. you're deceiving us like you're in Europe. Uh, actually, I, I just uh, went out to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Um, welcome everyone once again. Um, Mopacha wisdom, Madapuchi. I'm a software engineer and also a technical writer. So um, today we'll be talking about uh, Google Season of Doc 2021 workshop. So I hope you enjoyed the session. So first thing, first, uh, let me share my screen. So if you see my screen, just let me know. That's my screen. So I think um, they need to stop sharing first so you can share. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, Wisdom, I okay. think you can share now. All right, that's my screen now. Yeah, okay. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is just the Google Season of the 2021 workshop. You know, a lot changed how the application process for technical writers for last three years and last year, it's quite different from the way they did this year. So I will just walk you through on what you need to know about Google Season of Doc, what you would expect, and how you should prepare yourself. Okay, so first thing, first question is uh, what is Google Season of Doc? So Google Season of Doc is an annual program being organized by Google, giving technical writers an opportunity to. Sorry giving technical writers an opportunity to contribute to open source projects by paying them three months or five months stipends, depending on your choice. And also bringing that connection between the writers and the, and the um, organized, organized projects. So it also provides support for open source projects. So basically all the organizers are open source projects. So that is what you need to know about Google System of Work. Now, the next thing you need to have in mind is how to prepare yourself for Google Season of Doc, because they have steps, they have procedures, and they have processes you have to follow before you can get it. So first thing first, okay, let me, this implies, part of this implies in the way it has been run when the program has started and a little bit of how the program is being run right now. So what the check is that you have published an article. Like I remember when I applied last year, I've, I've had lots of articles and I applied it in my sample proposal, I added most of my articles, the articles I feel that have so much strong points. So I, I added them and I sent it to, to them through the proposal. So you need to have published articles online. So if you want to apply, you need to have lots of, okay, not like lots of articles though, but you need to have articles. Like I should say two or more and the article should be indexed. So most of the organization they might go through your your articles try to read your articles and try to know if what the way you the way you write your articles is what they would really like you to bring to their company so the next thing is you have to choose an open source project that aligns with your skill sets now this one implies to how it's been done before and also right now because the 2021 the, the processes are you would go over and check the organization you check their projects and nowadays the what they are they add 
they are requirements. So you need to check a project that has the requirements you, you have, your skill set. Let me say I'm a web developer and you check um, check something like Genome and you see most of what they are talking about, you know, PHP, HTML and CSS, but what they want is someone that has experience in C++ and C Sharp. <clears throat> Sorry. So in that case, you choosing that organization at the moment, it might they might not pick you because when they check your skill set, it's different from theirs, and also your goal will be different from their own. So they might not choose you. So in this case, you check the organization, you check their requirements, and you also check your skill set if it's if it matches what they what they want, and then you can go ahead and apply. Now, the next thing you need to have in mind, which is also important, is to reach out to the organization of the project. So when you check, I will show you the list as, as you go on. You see the list of the organization, you reach out to them, they have other means of you reaching out to them. So you get to know more about them and also get to talk to the to the mentors that mentor in the program. Then when you have probably done much about knowing the choosing a right um, open source project that aligns your skill and also reach out to the organization, then this is quite a little bit different now. Before what we did, we just Google will give us a form and we'll fill up the form and add our proposal and we send it to them. But the way it's been done now, you have to meet the organization and from there you can now write the proposal. But not like God giving you a form now. Then the next one is to follow up by contributing to the project after submission. So when you've submitted your, pro your, your proposal, you don't need to stop because they want somebody, most of them is to check their requirements. They just want somebody that is consistent, somebody that knows more about their yeah, open source project. So this fourth step, is fifth step, sorry, is very important because this fifth step will tell them that you actually like the open source, you like the idea, you really want to join them, you really want to help them improve their documentation. So in this section, this is where I feel they would have a whole lot of strong points to pick a um, technical writer that, that, that they will work with. So after submitting, keep on trying to improve there. If you have it on GitHub or have it on any other platform you can contribute to, you just try to go to that section and see a way to improve the doc as much as you can. While doing that, you also reach out to them because they have the details of the technical writer that submitted proposal. So when they check your details and they see what you're doing, that will give them a strong point that maybe if you join them, you will have to do more than what you're doing at the moment. So the last point is you have to be active on the organization preferred chat channel. Like when I worked with them, um, Genome, we used uh, we used IROC and we also used Genome Chat. So I'm always very, very active there, trying to send messages, trying to ask questions, and trying to show enthusiasm towards towards the project idea. So what you do is go there and always make sure you're active, you're trying to ask questions, go back to the documentation, check what you feel is not right. I know no documentation is perfect because they are always, always improving. So always check and have a very good idea of the open source project. That way you can know what to say in the, in the chat. So I feel this point will really help you prepare yourself and um, should I say get hired? <laughs> yeah, I would say get hired by the organization. And it's quite different the way it's been run now. Anyways, why going forward, I will show you more about that. So the next point we would have to discuss is what to expect because a lot of persons will have it in mind that Okay, I'm trying to help an organization. I'm trying because you would try to do a lot. Now you would ask yourself, why doing all this? What will I expect? What would be my benefit? What should be my reward? All right, first thing first, you have a real life working experience. So you, you when I joined Genome, yes, I'm a technical guy already. I've done lots of stuff, but that was a different feeling. That is a different organization, it's a different company. So I learned a whole lot from there. I had the real, I uh, had a real life working experience with Genome and that was fun. So when you join them, you will have a real life working experience. You will know what it means to work in an organization. You will know what it means to be in a company and as a technical writer. So that is for point one. Then the next one is you learn how to collaborate. So I added the mentor there because you're working directly with your mentor. So learning how to collaborate you, most people are just, um, I like to do stuff on my own, but I would like to have an opportunity where I would work with somebody. This is the best shot for you. You have to work with a mentor. He would mentor you, teach you, and show you processes, and you get to work with him. 
So that is a very good way to learn how to collaborate. That is what you would expect from the program. Then the third point is you get paid for, for learning. So I added stipends. So let it not be that it's just like, hey, you're coming to do and we're paying you. Just like, just have this as a token for we, we help you to render. So that's uh, something else. I know it's quite important to some person. So they want to know, will I get paid or will I just do everything free? What do you get paid? And the good thing in this 2021 is very different from last year. Last year, I didn't see any amount crossing six thousand dollars, but this year I'm seeing fifteen, I'm seeing ten thousand dollars just for one technical writer, and it's fun. So it's gonna be it's gonna be sweet this year to apply. All right, um, the next one is you build your portfolio and you build your profile. Profile, let's say you have your LinkedIn address and a recruiter wants to check out your your profile to know if you're a good fit. You know when you've worked with an organization for like three to five months. In technical writing through this um, Google Season of Job program, you also get they will also get to see that you've worked with this um, organization. And those are organizations that on a normal day it's not quite easy for you to just jump in there and start doing stuff with them. So Google Season of Job is making it easy for you to get in touch and get close to those uh, organizations and companies. So your portfolio will have the details of what you did and how you want to structure it and the company and all that and the number of uh, or the months you spent with the time you spent with the company. So that way they would know, oh, this person has some experience in technical writing. So that way it has helped you build your portfolio and also helped you build your profile. So um, most of us might not know much about open source and what it means to be an open source collaborator or maintainer. So this would help also you learn more about open source because it's open source. So you learn more about open source, you learn how to be an open source, you're maintaining the code base, you're maintaining the documentation, uh, a documentation, yes, for, for, the, for the company. So this would also help you know much about that. Then this, this other point is very, very important. You get to increase your network. It's, it's very, 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 very important because most people I know got um, their jobs not from applying. They didn't even do anything, just, they did little stuff with somebody and the person liked what they did and that was it. And the next thing is this guy is this guy is somebody I know that would that would that would, that would, be, very, that would be a good fit for this role. Now, how did that happen? Because you did something with that person and you've created, you've increased your network. So let's say I worked with uh genome last year. I've met so many awesome persons there, and maybe this year I work with a different organization. I also meet different awesome persons now I'm, I'm increasing my network i'm trying to know more people now next two years and next two years i get the opportunity to join to join a different organization you get to see that i've increased my network and that is very very good when it comes to job search so the other point is um the recommendation and referral from organization so when you work with an organization in the season of job and you did an awesome job before you for your month expired it would be an awesome thing because when they've checked what you've done and it looks like they would need your services, they might also hire you. It also creates that relationship. They might hire you, or if they find a very good opportunity somewhere, they say, We know somebody that did something with us some months ago and he was very good. I think he'll be a good fit and it will be as easy as ABCD. So people are trying to apply, people are trying to um, create that awareness, but the goal is not doc it's easy for you to get that recommendation from your organization if and only if you did an awesome job with the organization that hired the process then you have future opportunities with google i got i normally get some mails from google and even after the program they tell you if you want to apply for google you can go ahead and apply so which means when they check your profile they see that you did this google student of job program that would be like an edge over every other person including the experience you would have after them but being part of that program is something that will also be an edge so um ah thank you so at this point i would like to head over to uh, their website so let's see how we can work around the 2021 process okay sorry let me reshare my screen let me do a new share. All right.
Okay, so let me drop the link in the chat. All right, so you check the chat. I dropped the link. I just opened right now. So this is um, 2021 season of dogs. Now this is what they did. Unlike last year, they had much more uh, organizations, but this year they only have 30 organizations. So maybe they, their rules are quite strict. And one thing you should notice is first line you have the open source organization list of all the organizations you go through. There is season of dog pages. They all have their season of dog pages. Then you, they have their budget. So this is the money they, they kept. But we gave them that this is the money we wanted to pay to, to the technical writers that you hire after you finish. Now most of them are doing it. In, they, they are doing it in two phases. Phase first phase is when you're being hired, they will get to pay them that will be forty percent. Yes. Then after the whole program, they now give you. 60 percent of, of the money. now then this is the accepted project and proposal so first thing you would have to do before you apply you get to go to the accepted project proposal now this is the section where you check if your skill sets and if your information you need matches with this with any of the organization then I would advise you don't look at the budget at the moment. Try to look at the proposal that fits in your skill set, a proposal or a company you feel that you will learn so much from. Definitely money is good, but I believe money, when you get Money is the motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I believe money is good, but, <laughs> but what I also believe is when you're ready, when you're prepared, when you've built yourself, you've built your portfolio, the money you're talking about, you get much more than that. But if you might just, I know most people just let me check the budget. Let me check the one that I have the this fifteen thousand. No, this this too this too small for me. I need twenty thousand and five thousand. I can't go there. And you never knew. You never know if the five thousand budget will be the one that would hire you, that will give you the good um, good knowledge you need, help you build a portfolio, and also make it easy for you to get a job. So that's why I said for now. I wish this. I can blank this place so we don't get to see this. I will just focus on this side. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me start with a curious um, reader. You click on the report. Now they get to this point, they tell you about the open source project name. They give you the link to the open source project. So let's check, uh, let's check the link. All right, okay, link to your organization information page. So one thing to notice, if you check most of them, they're different. Some didn't use Google Docs, some use a different uh, platform. Okay, so this is their page, their season of docs page. Now this is the project idea. After doing the project idea, you need the problem, now how we measure success, and what skills would the technical writer need to work on this project? This is very, very, very important. This is where you check if this fits your skill. So must have familiarity with GitHub. Nice to have literacy material or an interest in educational development. So if you know this is what you like, then you go ahead and apply. And you have opportunities to apply to, I would, I'm not sure, but last year you can apply to three, just three maximum, I guess. But this year, I don't know the, Three, three minimum, sorry. I don't know the, the number for that, but I'll, I'll probably check and send it across. So you've seen the skill, skill set they need from a technical writer. You've seen the problem. You've seen how they measure success. You know the project idea. Then if this fits in the way you want, then you also go as far as reading so much the context, the problem statement and project scope and read so much about it. Then measuring project success, then this is where you are now, you can now apply. So it's not about interest in being a technical writer. If you have an interest, you drop your first name, last name, email address, then you submit. So this is for curious reader. And let's also check their budget. I know some want to see the budget, so let's see the budget. Let's drop the budget. Let's 
All right, okay. Uh, maybe maybe later you can go through the link and check but the one i know i saw their budget and their budget is very appealing to the eye <laughs> so okay this is redo clean now their budget is technical writers to update test and publish new documentation you're having ten thousand us dollars now they have volunteer stipends which is five hundred dollars project swag you have two hundred dollars and design dog assets. You have five hundred and fifty dollars. So this is the the budget for the document. Now you can also read about the project, read the project scope and the project source tool. So they are having two open open API CLI and the reader. So you read about what they want and how they want things to be done. Then if you think you have the skill for that. You can also apply. So there are so 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 much. So you have your time. You go through, go through them. And if you think also you don't have the skill set for any of them, I wouldn't advise you just go apply because of yeah the money is much of the money is involved. But I would probably like you to just learn from the application, but not to apply as long as you know you don't have the skill set. So when they even if they things turn out good and the higher you, you might find it difficult throughout the program. So in order to avoid that situation, just learn from learn from the whole processes and probably don't apply. Just learn from it and probably wait for either next season an annual program or you try to look for a different open source project that offers the volunteer, pure volunteer, not volunteer with students, pure volunteer and try to learn from that uh, process. So that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm through. So any questions? Okay, okay, I think I'm seeing a question. Okay, this is it for me, I guess. Okay, I'm still waiting for questions. Oh, the me... nice one. There's a question in the chat I would love you to answer by Chisum. You could read the chat, right? You could see the chat. So just help her and give her an answer to that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Familiarity, familiarity with GitHub in a matter of weeks. Let me say one week. I I it actually depends on the person. Actually depends on how fast you learn things or how slow you learn things because you're quite different. But I feel it's gonna take you like a week should give you the pure basics. A week you should have the pure basics then since it's weeks two three four five and above definitely you, you, you would have much much more than the beginners uh, knowledge of that but a week you should have the basics to push and pull you could have the basics for that okay next question i see okay, thank you very much and does it all right can a beginner in technical writing apply probably with a few articles Yes, like I said earlier, you don't need to have so much, probably two, but I would like to say in depth, like you have an article that tries to explain so much that is more technical than the word technical because, you know, sometimes I have a technical article and you go to the article and you not see anything much technical there. So you need to have an article, even if it's just one that is in depth, that is free of plagiarism, free of lots of typos then you can apply with that but in this case why applying you would also have to know so much about the project all right thank you any other question do we have any other question for our speaker 
before we run out of meeting. Okay. All right. I think we don't have any other question. No, Gene is telling you thank you. Uh, at this point, I just want to appreciate all of you for turning up. Thank you, Dami. Thank you, Wizzle. Thank you, Rufaya Mustafa, for organizing this. Thank you, Chisom. Thank you, again. Thank you, Ejiro, Nelson, Gawa, Kisi, Suzy, Olua, Nelson, Tolu, Kelvin, Afolabi. I will give a big shout out to all of you for coming up to this meetup. I really appreciate your turn up. And I really appreciate your turn up. And subsequent times, we'll be doing this. We're having meetups like this to explain things for all of us. This is a community we are growing. This is a community that the essence of the community is to learn the concepts, the, 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 the magic behind technical writing and documentation. Just like Dami said, there's a whole lot of opportunity. And just like Wisdom said, we could use this now. Even if you can apply, or even if you, you think you're not ready to apply for any of for Google Summer of Dog, you could just go through any of the projects. Get yourself prepared for next year. I've been a constant follower of Google Summer of Dog for three years. For three years, I've been following you know, for three good years. And there was something we, me, uh, Wisdom told me last night while we were on the call. Wisdom said the best way to actually get to Google Summer of Dog is to actually look out for a project you want to apply for. And even before they accept you, since it's an open source project, start contributing. Even if you don't get accepted, is a plus to your portfolio that you've contributed to an open source project. So I think this is the way forward for all of us. And I really want to tell you guys, kudos to everyone who will be applying for some of WC. And I wish you guys will make it. And please, from the community, whoever got accepted to Google Summer of Dog should share it back with us to the community so we could celebrate with you and have this vibe that at least someone from the community got accepted into it. Thank you everyone for coming in. At this point, officially, the meetup has ended. So you can actually do your networking. You can chat with them privately now if you want to. You can chat with them if you want to for the, for the next three minutes before it's 12.10. Before it's 12.10, then everyone finds you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys for coming up. I love you all. Thank you very much. Um, I think Collins has a question that is yet to be answered. Um, OK. Yeah, oh, and he's raising Collins, up his hand. Sorry. Yeah. OK, wait and see. Okay. Collins, you can, you can mute your mic and talk. Yeah, for someone. OK, please. OK. Let's, okay. Let's yes, he's already answered the question. Can I go on? Yeah, go on. OK. Uh, thank you very much. This is quite enlightening, far more than I expected. But um, I um, I saw this um, this um, version about um, around December and decided to give it a shot. What I see from today's presentation shows that I have a long way to go. I only took a course on Udemy, so I want to know how. Where do I start from? Because the course I took purely was was has nothing to do with documentation, just purely technical writing and nothing about software. But this interests me. I would like to know where can I start from? I was saying just now, I also had to struggle to follow up. So where can I start from, please? Okay, um, probably let, um, <laughs> let my second speaker take that because he's uh, more professional in that field. Okay. <laughs> you're also professional. Wisdom. Wisdom. You are, Wisdom. You are a professional Wisdom. in this thing. You are a professional too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. The reason I said that is he's doing that like almost every day. Like that is more focused. For me, I have technical IT and I have software development. So right. he should go first, then I would come to the <laughs> um, okay. Well, All thank right, you for me. that. Uh, and it's the same thing also because I actually code on a daily basis and I also have to. Right. Oh, really? So, but then, yeah. So, I think the best way to start is there. Are, um, you need to go with um, start with um, open source projects. There are a couple of open source projects that you don't necessarily like need permission to 
to like contribute. What you just need to do is, but you might need to be familiar with um, GitHub. So you can just start. I think um, most of the JavaScript framework out there are open source, Vue.js, um, React, and everything. Their documentation is open for anybody to contribute to. It can even be just one that is on um, GitHub that they probably don't have it like a website where they update their documentation. So I know I did that when sometime like some years back when I was working on a Ruby on Rails framework, the documentation, it, I found it hard to understand, but what I learned while I was trying to make use of it, I just noted it down and I made a um, request for an update on that. And they accepted it and they were really grateful. So that's one way to start. Like one thing about writing is, um, I, this might sound like hypocrisy because I'm, also, I'm actually bad at it. You just need to start. Then when you start, you keep making updates. You keep reading other articles you like, like have references that you'll probably, oh, I like what this person did here. Then you take it and you apply it into whatever you're doing. But for, for people that probably want to maybe eventually end up using it to make money, you can start with open source projects like the open um, JavaScript, Python and all those things, just contribute to it, reach out to the team and get familiar with it. From there, you can then apply for um, the paid gig. Or if you're a software developer, you can make a tutorial, probably as you're learning something, write about it. That's also one way to go about it. And from there, you'll learn and build up on that. Okay. okay. Let, me, let me just add a little bit to what Jamie said. Also, this also might sound like a hypocrite as well, but Forgive me for being a hypocrite. Uh, there's, there's someone in the space, I really appreciate what she's doing. Her name is Edidion, Didiko, and Bolaji. Those guys have been following their work all of a sudden, and they're doing work. Just like Dami said, just start writing. And Kevin have done something awesome in the chats. The link Kevin shared in the chat is the first point of call for you to start for technical writing. I've gone through that course and I've finished that course. And also, there's a link I shared in our group chat on WhatsApp. Let me see if I could share that link here. It's a link where you could learn about technical writing. It's called I Did Rather Write. It's been owned by Tom Johnson. I will share the link with you guys too. And, and it's going to be awesome. So just like... Sorry for the barbarian noise. <laughs> just like... Dami said, wisdom, you're laughing, right? Just like oh, Dami said, oh, the first point of call is for open source. I'll be sharing some open source projects on the WhatsApp group as well. I'll take Please, our time. This I'm night on the WhatsApp group. About some open source. Okay, I will drop the link. The link is on the chat. Just go through the chat. You'll see the WhatsApp group link. I will drop the link. And I will share some open source okay. projects with everybody on the WhatsApp group. And also the link to Tom Johnson's course on technical writing as well. And take up this course, start writing. Start writing using hash node, medium, and the likes. Write from what you know. Write about how to use HTML. You could write about how to use CSS. You could write about anything at first that is technical, just like Wisdom said. Not just writing a blog post, calling it a technical article, no. There are different between a technical article and a normal blog post and within, that is within a tech space. So we should have this distinct understanding. A technical article is the article that is being written to solve a particular problem. Why a blog post is a normal post that is generated for sales to drag audience to whatsoever thing you're selling. For instance, if I'm selling a phone, I need to be writing an article around phones. So, but when I write about how to use the particular phone, I'm helping you solve a problem. There is this project on the Google Summer of Dog that I take note of. One of their, their projects is about developing a content strategy. That's just all they want you to do, to just develop content strategy for them. So imagine you could do that. One other one is creating a tutorial for Litmus. If you could create a tutorial for Litmus, the tutorial involves video, code snippets, just like Dami said. So this is a whole lot of thing, but don't see it as a complex thing. It's something that you just create and have it around it. Take us two hours of your time, write, whatever you've learned throughout that day, you publish. You can share it on the group. We can help you do a proofread for you. That's the essence of the group. We can proofread for you and give corrections. Then we'll grow together. Hope this answers your question, Collins. Yes, very much. It's quite encouraging, particularly the WhatsApp group. I will follow through. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other person have anything to contribute before we wrap it up? 
Yeah, I wanted to say something, but uh, probably you and uh, Damila has uh, probably said uh, everything. But what I would try to add is uh, first thing you need to do is that I feel is the most important thing. I know, yes, we all know English, but probably you can just go back a little bit to the English word <laughs> and try to learn a little bit about writing in English since that would be the primary language you'll be working with. Um, that is what I think I would add. And um, also, why, why you're starting, you should also try to start with some tools like Grammarly, because Grammarly will also help you with your English, try to correct some grammars and typos. So that way you can also, that would help you improve you while you're learning. Because it would be, I know a friend of mine that submitted an article and they sent him a feedback and lots of typos, lots of um, plagiarism, and lots of this and lots of that. So that would be something when you when you're starting, you start with two like Grammarly. You go back to your English word and try to learn few things in English that you feel. Now you have to check the areas, your strong areas in English and your weak areas, and try to work on the weak areas before you start writing. Because I feel. When you know your weak areas and you work on your weak areas, you can be bold enough to just pick up something and write. And one thing in writing is when you don't, uh, when you're having that English problem in writing, you might not even know how to start or where to start from. So I feel that is the most important one. Go back to the English, try to work on your English very well in writing and try, learn to work with, start with Grammarly as a tool for writing. So to correct few things and you also learn while he's doing correction so that is then after then you can jump up to the next step all right any other person has anything to say before we wrap it up okay on this note officially we're done for today so thank you guys for coming around i love you all bye